All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. And I am back with an amazing, amazing new friend, Melissa Denise. Am I pronouncing your last name correctly? Melissa? You are. Yes. Even ask Thank you. you. Okay. Denise, yes. So I'm really excited because she has some really cool stuff, experiences to share with us. She has a really popular podcast called Love Covered Life, which I will put the link down below. Um, and she's, I mean, she's just got such amazing stuff on there and she's an amazing person. So let's get started. Let me read your bio. First of all, Melissa, thank you for being here. Thank you so much for inviting me, Sharon. Yes, thank you. Okay, let me read your bio. Okay, Melissa Denise was born with pre-birth memories of divine light and spent her early years searching for answers within the framework of the Christian faith in which she was raised. At 19, she had a spiritually transformative experience in which she awakened into a direct encounter of the love, light, and bliss that she remembered from before. Now Melissa has made it her life's mission to share divine love with others in a way that is easy to understand and experience. She shares her own teachings and interviews other spiritual experiencers and conscious influ influencers on her YouTube channel, Love Covered Life Podcast. Her joy is to help people know and experience that God is love and that God is within them. How true is that? Hmm. Okay. And I, I actually met Melissa because um, she reached out to me and I shared some of my experiences on her podcast as well. Yeah. And uh, thank you for that. Okay. Let's get down to the meat of this. Please share as, as much as you care to share about your STE. Yes. Thank you so much, Sharon. And I just want to say that I've had you, I've had Sharon on my podcast twice because I so enjoyed the conversations. It just flowed so easily. And so I want to thank you for being willing to do that for me also. Oh, of course. Yes. It, it was a lot of fun. Definitely. Yes. So just a little bit of background. I had have pre-birth memories as Sharon read in my bio. And so that sort of set the stage for what was going to unfold in my life because I was also raised in a strict branch of Christian fundamentalism, which taught me many things that were the exact opposite to this deeper knowing that I had carried with me from my pre-birth memories. And so as a child, I, I began to suppress these memories, but I still had this like deep knowledge, this memory of the light that I could not um, suppress. Nothing could take that from me. And so I was, my whole life was like this constant search to understand what that was and to get it back because I wanted to feel that, that love and that peace and just the bliss that you, you don't typically experience in day-to-day -day life here. So I really got sort of sucked into my religious beliefs and I was looking for what I was taught to call God within my religion. And I was just desperately, desperately seeking. I would do um, crazy things like go out in blizzards or, you know, thunderstorms, crazy weather to try to stimulate some type of experience and just nothing would ever work. I was always left empty, coming up empty. And I became very depressed and I would beg and pray because that's what I was taught to do in my religious faith every single night before I went to bed. Please let me have an experience. I need to experience this again. I need to know what it is. I know if I could feel that bliss again, all of my earthly pain would just be gone in a second. And so I prayed for years and years and nothing ever happened. And I cannot explain why it happened when it did, but I was the age of 18 or 19. I don't remember exactly. I estimate I was around 18. And I was laying in my bed one night praying like I normally do, asking for an experience. And suddenly I was in another dimension. So there was two parts to my experience. And the first part, 
I still perceived myself to be in my body laying on my bed. And so um, I was not asleep. I was fully awake and my eyes were closed because I was trying to fall asleep. So I'm laying there in bed and instantly I'm in this ocean of love. And it's like the earthly world just falls away and my entire consciousness is taken up with this love that we do not experience here in this world. So there are no words to describe it, but I recognized it because I had experienced it before. And I believe all of us have before we come to this earth, but I instantly recognized it as what I had been taught to call God, um, definitely the creator. And it was like this huge force field of love, but it was also a presence. Um, and it, I could feel these waves of love just washing over and over my body. And it also went through me and it completely filled me up with love and peace and bliss. And it was the best way I can describe it is it was this very magnetic experience. Like it completely captivated my entire consciousness. I couldn't think of anything outside of it. And I said to it, where have you been my entire life? I've been looking for you my entire life and you are finally here. And it felt like I was um, in the, like an eternal womb. Like I was in the womb of my mother and held in the arms of my eternal father at the same time. And this is where words really fail me because there are no words to describe the comfort and the security and the safety and the knowledge that all is well, all has always been well, and all will always be well. And it's like you're falling into this. Um, it's like you're falling into the infinite arms of the universe and and just landing in the the deepest embrace. I I just can't put words to it. I don't know how to do it. And it's so frustrating because I want people to be able to experience this. So I don't know how long this part of the experience went on, but I I would have stayed there forever. At that point, as far as I was concerned, I was done with my life. I This is where I wanted to be. It's where I has always wanted to be. And I had no intention of leaving. Um, at some point, my consciousness expanded outside of my body, and I perceived myself to be up above the earth somewhere in the universe, and the presence was still with me. And it's um, it gets a little bit difficult to describe here because time was different. So it was like multiple things were happening at the same time. So on the one hand, um, I had an experience of ultimate knowledge where this presence was communicating with me and I realized that I could ask questions. So I began asking all the questions I had ever wanted to ask. And it's like, I it was telepathic communication. It, so I would think of a question and as soon as I thought of the question, I would have this massive download of information and I would know the answer to that question and how that question fit in with everything else in the universe. And that would make me think of more questions, which I would then ask. And so my, every time I received a download of information, it's like my consciousness was expanding. So within a split second, this was happening so fast. I just expanded like this. And I felt like I encompassed all that is like the entire universe was happening within me. And I knew all that there was to know or all that I could know at that level. And at my most expanded state, I saw the key to life. And I remember thinking, oh, it's the key to life. It's so simple. How did I not know this? And <laughs> at that point, as soon as I saw that, I began contracting back into my head. Now, on the other hand, at the same time, I was having other experiences and I, I remember some of the things that I saw. I remember two of the things that I saw. So the first one was that I looked down at the earth and I saw that everything is made of brilliant light. And I was shown that the light is the creator, the presence of the creator or the arms of God or the love of God. And not only is it holding everything in existence, every person, every animal, every tree, every object, 
it is making up those things. So everything is made of this brilliant light. And we at our level of consciousness here are like toddlers stumbling around trying to make the right decisions without the full knowledge of what we're doing. And that's how God or whatever word you're comfortable using, that's how source sees us. It, he's He or she or it sees us as a toddler just doing what toddlers do, stumbling around, making mistakes, being silly, whatever, and loves us with such infinite love and understands why we're doing everything that we're doing. And there is nothing that we can do to make God angry, to disappoint God, to surprise God. There's nothing to feel guilty about or ashamed about. Um, everything is working out exactly as it is supposed to. I saw that my life had been planned and I was supposed to experience certain very difficult things, but there was no guilt in that. There was no fear. There was absolutely nothing to be concerned about. And so seeing this, the best way that I can describe it is if you've ever flown in an airplane on a cloudy or a rainy day, and it's dark and gloomy below the clouds, but when you break up above the clouds, you see that the sun is still shining. So this experience was like coming up above the clouds, um, awakening into this world of brilliant light and experiencing that your, your angels and your guides are, are and the creator is right there holding you and loving you and with you every second of the way and there's nothing to fear nothing to be worried about and it's just this deep peace and safety and comfort that I can't describe and then you look down at the earth and you see that um, the storm clouds are actually an illusion that only exists from underneath and it's designed this way for a reason so that we can have certain experiences that we wouldn't be able to have otherwise. So that was the first thing I saw. The second thing that I remember seeing is when I was at my most expanded state, this is so cheesy, but the words that I was given in my teenage brain were the cosmic master plan of God. And remember, I was a, a Christian, so this is the terminology that was comfortable to me. But I looked down on, it was as if I was looking down on this plan that included everything that will ever happen within this universe. And it was beautiful, magnificent colors and patterns and shapes, and it was moving and shifting, and it contained the life paths of all conscious beings. And I could see that everything was absolute perfection. And that the plan contained what we perceive to be the good and the bad, but ultimately it was all leading back towards love. Every choice is a choice for love because when, even when you seem to be choosing the opposite of love, you're choosing a path that will teach you about love in some way. And there is absolutely nothing you can do to get away from love. There's nothing that you can do to be eternally lost. And I was specifically given the message for myself that you have nothing to feel guilty about. You have nothing to feel ashamed of. You have nothing to fear. There's no judgment awaiting you. There's only an awakening into brilliant light. And you have to go back and walk this path that you have chosen. We will be with you every step of the way, guiding you and holding you. And everything is going to work out the way that it is supposed to. And so with that, I began to contract back into my body and I, I, it, it felt like all of the information and knowledge I had gained was leaving my consciousness like a balloon losing air. And there's nothing I could do to hold on to it because I was contracting back into a denser plane and I just couldn't fit all of that inside <laughs> my human brain. Um, one th other thing I didn't mention is that I heard music this entire time, um, what I like to call the music of the spheres, and I particularly noticed it as I was contracting back into my head. It's like I was floating back in on the music, and this music is the song that is making up 
everything in existence, that our lives are all a part of this and it's all perfection. So I contracted back into my body and I had the first moment of my ego or my um, self-awareness, I guess, coming back online and saying, whoa, what just happened? Because when you're in the experience, it's like, it's just happening. You're not really questioning it. Um, so I felt uh, the love, the love stayed with me that night until I fell asleep. And then I felt this glow, this presence around me for the next couple of days. And then that eventually faded away. <laughs> so that was my experience. That's what I can remember of it. Most of it, I, most of the knowledge I can't remember. Oh, that's amazing. Thank you for sharing that, Melissa. That's amazing. I know that unfortunately we have these any kind of an epiphany or experience or you know and, um, even going to courses and things like that or or retreats you know you're up on on cloud nine and then you come back to your <laughs> to this 3d life and then we're 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 walking on air for a little while and then and then we get back into our routine and it starts to fade and we're like oh back into the routine of it yeah, yeah. Um, but I, I love that. Do you, do you mind if I ask you a couple questions? No, go ahead. Oh, oh okay. Um, so when you were, I can definitely relate to the, being in the light and feeling that all encompassing tangible, uh, love and joy and, uh, no, nothing, nothing you could say or do or think or have done would negate any of that love for you right yeah. yeah yes and it's um and I I agree with you that if everyone could just remember that we would have a better world <laughs> that that's yes. where we come from yeah yeah so um in your afterwards coming back from it uh I'm assuming and um I wonder if you could share how that changed your perception on the religion the religious mm -hmm. teachings that you were brought up with or if it did at all yes um absolutely I would say at that point in my life the number one way that it changed me is I became even more of an spiritual experience junkie I like to say <laughs> and I was already searching for those experiences but I, it took me, let's see, I'm almost 20 years out from it now. So it took me a good 15 years to fully integrate in the beginning, because I was still young, I didn't fully um, digest the message I was supposed to get from it, I guess, because I thought, wow, that felt amazing. Now I need to have another experience so I could feel amazing again. So I I left the fundamentalist church that I was raised in and I joined a charismatic church, which was a lot more um, allowing of people having and expressing emotions. And I really sought spiritual experiences within the framework of that church. And I did have some, but nothing like that. Eventually, I just became very disillusioned with all of it. And I started to think, well, Maybe none of it's real. I, I was just exhausted from the constant chasing of experiences and coming up empty all the time. And I thought, well, maybe that whole thing was just the devil. Maybe I shouldn't be doing this at all. I just completely shut down my spiritual connection. And that's the only time in my life when I've done that. And it led to a really dark time in my life uh, where my husband and I, both really struggled um, in every area, our marriage, our finances, everything was completely falling apart. And it was around that time that I discovered near-death experience accounts. And I started binge reading them because I realized there's all of these other people who have had the same experience I did. So it was it was for real. And I started getting all of these answers and everything started making sense. And um, 
at that point, I was able to fully integrate my experience and accept the messages that I had been given in a way that I never had been able to before. Nice. Thank you. Yeah, I've noticed a pattern. A lot of people who have these transformative experiences that afterwards, it seems like we go through a dark time or a really tough struggle. Maybe that is part of the integration because, you know, the ego wants to fight all this. And so the lower self is like, no, 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 no. You know, we, we, yeah. <laughs> it's difficult for the lower self to accept that that's, I feel that, um, that that's, some, that's what, who we are and that we are yeah. eternal and that we don't ever die and that we are eternal, that type of thing, because the ego mm -hmm. hangs its hat on the fact that we do that we survival survival and we die right? right and the ego can't understand something like that so so i've noticed in um in a lot of experiences these types of experiences whether they be near death or stes that there seems to be a, a dip right in our um in our life and where things chaos you know things start getting stirred up does that make sense yes yeah 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 so um, I guess that's maybe par for the course because we have things that need to be stirred up and dealt with perhaps. Yeah. Well, I think for one, it can stir up um, people's shadow. I know yeah. for me, that's been a huge thing that really got stirred up in the last few years. Um, just all of those underlying subconscious beliefs that have to be dealt with and healed really. And then it's hard if somebody's in a strict belief system that goes against what they were shown and everyone in their life thinks that they're making it up or being misled, mm -hmm. then accepting their experience can be um, mean rejection from their community. Yes. And that, you know, and that's painful. Definitely. All of that. Yeah. And what I've noticed is that uh, that is kind of part of the course too, as you, as people start waking up to our true nature and things like that because belief systems is a belief system crash is a, is a huge deal it really is it can uh, cause all kinds of uh, mental distress and mental emotional oh yeah leading to physical distress yeah so belief system crash is um, number one thing that we tend to want to hang on to mm. and so we point fingers yeah you're crazy you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, that's such a, a huge topic we could get into. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the primary reasons why I do what I do and why I think a lot of people in this spiritual community do is because religion can cause such huge divides that just feel impossible for people to cross. If you have, if your belief system is challenged, and you start questioning things, you're not only losing your own foundation and everything that you've built your life and your identity on, you're potentially, and in many cases, also losing your family, your friends, everybody that you care about. Yeah, it ends up being a really big deal. And, mm -hmm. and like you said, you stuffed it down, right? You tried to ignore mm -hmm. it. And it caused you to go into another depression. And if we do step it down and ignore it, it's it, 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 there's some way that it has to come back up because you yeah. can't, you can't, once you have those experiences, you just can't, you can't ignore it. Right. Yeah. So you're live, you end up living inauthentically because it, right. at least for me, it keeps coming up. And you pretend mm -hmm. that you believe something that you know isn't true just so you can go along and fit in. Yeah. And, and eventually, it doesn't last long. No, you reach a point where you can't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Causes all kinds of um, imbalances I've noticed and <laughs> I've found. Yeah. All kinds of imbalances. Yeah. So, yeah, that's huge. Belief system crashes are happening all the time now. And it's a big deal. It's, it's mm -hmm. a really big deal. Yeah. Especially with them. Um, religion and um, those types of things with more people talking about their near-death experience and realizing that it's not about judgment or uh, 
God isn't about judgment. God isn't about that. God, source, whatever we want to call the infinite mm -hmm. universe, whatever. It's about love. Yeah, that's what it all boils down to. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we just know that one thing. Isn't that what Yeshua, Jesus came to the planet to teach us? <laughs> it's like it's so simple that we miss it. <laughs> Because we just assume right. it can't be that. That would never work. Yeah, it, it can't be that simple. But that's, mm -hmm. that's all it is. Yeah. So I know that you have a, a um, close relationship with Yeshua and Jesus, correct? Mm. Yes. Would, would you mind sharing, if you don't mind sharing how that came about or re met, remembered, I guess I should say, uh, your relationship with him? Yeah, would love to. Well, I was raised as a Christian, so I was taught that Jesus or Yeshua is God and the only God and the only person that you can um, trust for the forgiveness of your sins and, and all of that. Um, I have a slightly different view on it now. I do, I do still consider Jesus to be my my greatest teacher, my guide, my I consider myself to be a disciple of Jesus. I do actually still believe that he is divine. I believe everything is divine, though, and I believe that he is a more clear uh, manifestation for the rest of us to follow. Um, I do have a pre-birth memory that concerns Jesus. I remember being in a nursery-type place. Um, for some reason, I always want to call it the garden of light and it was like it was this beautiful light filled place where um everything was made of light and it was light like steam like light flowing from one thing into the next and the air was made of light and it was so brilliant and jesus was made of light and he was so full of joy and it was like the light was his joy and his laughter and I remember being a really innocent soul like the two th feelings that I felt the most were innocence and joy and I was there with other it seems like younger souls because it felt like it was like a nursery or a garden of souls and Jesus would come and visit us there but it's just a glimpse of that that I remember so I go back to that now, like that deeper memory I have of him, of being this, like being of joy and light and innocence who loves children and is laughing and has this great sense of humor and just wants to guide us and help us. And so I do find for myself that there's two what I would view to be extremes. Now, maybe they're not, maybe they're right for other people, but on the one hand is the relit the way the religious view Jesus that Jesus is like had to die to pay for your sin and died to uh, appease the wrath of God and and um, he's the only hope for your salvation. I don't think he wants us to view him that way. And then there's the other side where people will just totally throw Jesus out with religion because they are traumatized by religion and say, well, Jesus was just a man, you know, he was just a teacher, or maybe he didn't even exist. But for me, I take more of a middle approach where I think Jesus is there to help us. I think he's there to help Earth's evolution. And I think that's why he came. And I think that he wants us to ask for help and guidance when we need it. But he also wants, the ultimate goal is for us to awaken to our own divinity. And he's here to help us on that path. So that's the view I take now. Yeah. I love that. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, you talk about pre-birth memories. I find that fascinating. Is that similar to, I guess, what um, you're probably aware of Journey of Souls, right? Yes, I read it. Okay, Michael mm -hmm. Newton. Yeah. Is that similar to what he was experiencing with his, with his uh, clients or patients with life between life, I guess, type of um, mm. experiences? Do you think? Yeah, it cut you out for a minute. Were you asking about the pre-birth memory? Oh, sorry. Yes. Pre-birth yeah. memories. Yes. Yeah. Um, I don't have a, a such a clear cut 
memory as the people will get in the hypnosis sessions of like this happened and then this happened and then I planned my life and then I came in but I just I have glimpses of things that happened I do remember and I remember that my life was planned because I remember asking for red hair and I just have that one memory of the planning process <laughs> so it's kind of disjointed but the strongest memory I have is of the light. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. What are your, what are your thoughts on, there's a lot of information out there going around, which when I first heard it, we may have had this conversation on your channel. I don't remember mm -hmm. about the false light that there's mm -hmm. a false light apparently that uh, some people believe is where it, traps you in that reincarnation cycle right do you have any thoughts on that yeah I I do and we did discuss this a little bit I enjoyed okay. hearing your thoughts on it too um my if I'm going I can only speak for myself really if I'm going off of my own memories and my own experience with the light I would say what I experienced was not false I'm not going to say that there couldn't be a false light. I'm not going to say that somebody couldn't be trapped in a reincarnation cycle because I think that would be really arrogant for me to say, well, this could never happen to anyone. And I, there's a, a lot of things I don't know and haven't experienced, but for speaking for myself, what I experienced was not false. And it, and the, the way I can say that with such confidence is because they describe this false light as if it's luring people in with feelings of love and peace and then um, somehow convincing them or deceiving them into going and living another life. And what I experienced was so far beyond just a feeling of love. And a, it. this is where it gets really hard because I can't put it into words and, and I need to to be able to explain what I'm saying. But it the entire afterlife is made of love. It's not like there's just this light that tricks you. Everything is love. And what I experienced was more than just a light and a feeling of love. It was, it was the creator. It was infinity. It was everything. It was so many things that I don't know how to describe. It's like it was... Um, it, it was music and laughter and love and joy and peace and geometry and mathematics. And it was, it was like the creation happening in the eternal present moment. So it was like you're, you're experiencing, <laughs> it's like, I, I don't, it, it's like it's outside of time, so it's hard to put this into words, but it's like you're experiencing creation happening. And the creation is a song of love. And the if you could put it into words, it would be, we are love and everything is love. Come experience love with us. And this is um, eternally happening. And you're in this moment and it's happening all around you. And I don't know. It's it's just hard to describe it, but it's it was not even like they're tr they were trying to get me to incarnate. I was just experiencing this. So what I can say is, if there is a false light and if there is a reincarnation trap, it's a small part of something that is so much bigger. And the universe itself is benevolent, and you just use your intuition use common sense, um, follow your guidance, ask for help. If you're scared or confused, ask to be shown the true light. And there's nothing to fear. There's, there is absolutely nothing to fear. Thank you. Thank you. That's beautiful. It is hard to put into words when, I mean, it's home right home yes we recognize yes. it as home it's like oh it, it, it uh, and for my memory is that it, it when you're there it's like you never left yes. whatever happened 
before or any t- time was just a dream and it was just a little dream. It was just a s- speck of a dream. It was just, a, you know, it's like you walked from one room into another and when you were in the other room, it didn't, it's, it was just a, a very short experience. It was a dream. Yeah. And that's another thing when you actually remember when you're in the light, you remember Mm -hmm. what you remember being there before you remember everything. And another thing I would say is that probably the vast majority of near-death experiencers do not agree with the false light narrative because, and these are the people who have actually experienced it. And there's been so many that I've talked to who chose to come back there was no being or light trying to convince them as to why they should they made the decision themselves so that's another thing to think about yeah that i believe that that's my experience as well is that and what i understand is we make these choices we choose and you know reincarnation is just part of the big the big plan whatever we want to call it right. the, the big experience that we're experiencing here so I'm sure that Earth is not the only planet where we have reincarnation. Yeah. That doesn't, that doesn't make a lot of sense. And I always feel that and I always say that, well, if God, creator, whoever it is, only gave us one experience to to learn and grow and and you know and try to experience all that we can, then we got chipped. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> Why not have as many as we can? And, you know, and learn how to master the the lower planes, where we want to call them lower frequencies as we move up. And then we're like, mm-hmm. okay, well, I'm done on that planet. I figured that out. Now, you know, we're up here in um, the higher frequencies where we're home again. To me, it's kind of like, well, people have called it school. We decided to go to earth college or earth school and toddlers. I love that <laughs> analogy because we're kind of like toddlers here. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I love that analogy too. And so, you know, let's, let's do that. Let's go into a, some, a cycle on another planet or another star system or something like that. Why not? I see Mm this as, as, you know, planet hoppers and galaxy hoppers and, and uh, just moving around the universe experiencing. Yeah. To me, it sounds more fun. Yeah. Yeah. I think that that's what we're all doing is experiencing and learning and expanding our own level of awareness. And I know myself in this world, I totally believe that I would choose to come back because I like a challenge. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably how a lot of us are. We get over there and we just think, oh, I'm going to go try this. I can handle it. (laughs) Then we get here and we're like, no, why? What was I thinking? (laughs) Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I do have a memory of talking with my guidance and uh putting all all of this on my plate, right? In this lifetime or others. I mean, because I don't believe that we see I believe when we're sitting there with our guidance that we see our lifetime experiences as kind of congruent or you know, kind of in one maybe one package. <laughs> we can choose it, you know, in separate experiences and look at those as we move mm-hmm. down, in, you know, in, in our vision. But, you know, I believe that we have themes and things like that. And so, so as I'm conferring with my guidance and putting in a bunch of, bunch of uh, experiences and challenges on my plate and they're like, are you sure? Are you sure about that? Yeah. 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 Pile it on. Come on, pile it on. Like going to this buffet, of, you know, like you put all this, all this food on your plate. And you're like, oh, oh, what was I thinking? <laughs> right. <laughs> That's a good way to we describe told you, it. We told you. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're like, help, help. Tell me what to do. At least I, I know. Am. Why'd you No, <laughs> Nope. You have to figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll leave you breadcrumbs, but no, this, this, you chose it. We tried to warn you, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could totally see myself doing that, like you said too, right? <laughs> Enjoy challenges. Mm-hmm. The more it seems like the more the better. But yeah, that's, that's kind of the human condition, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. <laughs> 
we're not growing if we don't have a challenge if we're not striving and we're not you know that's true yeah working to work something out Mm. learning and growing that's part of the the beautiful part of humanity Mm. (laughs) yeah I agree so I know that you are aware of the law of one teachings yes a little bit about that yeah which I adore have you read all the books I haven't I have not read them all Um, I think I got halfway through the third book and I have, I've studied them a little bit though. I, I find the teachings fascinating. They're definitely a lifelong study, aren't they? Yeah. There's so (laughs) much, there's a lot in there that's above my ability to understand a lot of metaphysical stuff. Like when it gets into the pyramids and the, the arcs that the energy travels and all that. (laughs) I, I think I'd yeah, have right. to have a little bit more of education in physics to understand all of it. Yeah, yeah I understand that. Definitely. Um, yeah, totally. There, I'm the kind of person that reads paragraphs over and over and over until I'm like, okay, it kind of, it kind of, I'm kind of integrating it now. All right. Okay. That makes a little bit of sense. And then I move on to the next one because it's like, huh? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, totally. But um Love one is definitely a lifelong study and I, I've gotten through two of the books. So I haven't, mm-hmm. I haven't started the third one yet, but of course in miracles, are you aware of, I'm sure you're aware of a course. In miracles. Yeah. I love a course in miracles. I'm going okay. through the workbook now again. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Good. 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 I was, th- yeah, I was thinking of going through the workbook myself actually the other day mm-hmm. because I heard about um, this new teaching and you may have heard about it i'm sometimes i'm late to the party on things uh, the yeshua t- letters the Yesh- yeshua letters have i've heard of it but i have not looked into it at all okay i just bought the that collection and um i was wondering if you had heard about it but it feels it feels good so far oh what's it, what's in it uh, well uh, the gentleman who's uh, apparently jesus yeshua appeared to him started with mm-hmm. a dot of light in his third eye and he was a meditator and um and had uh worked on his spiritual practice and then jesus just started appearing to him first in his with a light in his third eye in his inner vision and then when he opened his eyes he's standing there in front of him wow he comes in through light yeah for a, a portal of light and then he walks in and he's there with him and he gives him some teachings. Uh, you know, he's asking him to be a scribe, basically. Mm. And so uh, I haven't gotten very far in it so far, but uh, it's interesting. And and I'm in, still in the beginning of it <clears throat> where the gentleman who wrote the, who, accept, who accepted this mission, <laughs> mission impossible almost, <laughs> mission possible, um, he accepted the mission with him and he's still having a really hard time uh, believing that it's happening. Oh, I I can imagine that would be hard. Yeah. Yeah, totally. So he has a, uh, a wife who's helping him along that's telling him if, you know, why not you type of thing. Mm-hmm. And I went through that. Did you go through that with your experience? Why me? You know, yes. What, why am I so special? Yes. What, what, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you care to share a little bit about that? How that? Yeah. How you get over that. <laughs> yes. Well, I I wondered that about my pre-birth memories. Why? Why do I have these memories? And other most other people don't. But I think the reason why is because we each have a unique purpose here something that we specifically came here to do and most of us myself included because I just have glimpses of these memories it if we remembered all of that it would stop us from doing what we're supposed to do here Mm -hmm. Um, because we have to be immersed in the experience for it to be a real experience but I think when we do have spiritual um I don't want to say gifts because then it makes it sound like one person's over another. But when we do have these experiences 
and memories and abilities is because it plays into our purpose or the reason why we're here. So we probably agreed. Maybe he agreed. I'll, I'll be the one to get this message to the world. And for me, I needed to be driven by these memories in order to give the message that I'm supposed to give, which is that it's all about love. And I have to be 100% driven by that because I know it to be true. Mm -hmm. So somebody, but then I've also had the opposite question. Like, why don't I have more spiritual experiences? Why can't I, um, why am I not like a medium or why don't I have these amazing experiences when I meditate like other people do? Well, because I'm not supposed to, because that would in some way infringe on the reason why I'm here or maybe something that I'm supposed to learn. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I've always, yeah, she was always taught me is you're exactly where you need to be. Mm. We do tend yeah. to compare ourselves to others, right? How come I'm not, you know, as uh, having the experiences they're having or as clear as that person or yeah, whatever it is that's the human condition too part of that right. is compare comparisons but we're exactly where we need to be right yeah, yeah. everything is perfection yes i love that i love that yeah totally so um did you get um, in your ste spiritual transformative experience did you get a sense at all in the knowledge that you were bringing forward? Because I get this a lot. You probably get this question too, because you interview a lot of people and you have so much content on your podcast. Thank you, thank you for bringing mm -hmm. all that through. Um, did you get a, a sense of uh, any kind of a um, insight on why people uh, are so bad? Some people are just so bad. <laughs> hmm. That's something I've often wondered about myself. Um, what we consider I would, bad, I guess you could say. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing that I was shown, I was, I don't remember a direct answer to that question. If I was, if I did ask that, but the two things that I was shown is this is good. I always hesitate to say something like this because there are people who will take it the wrong way, but from a higher perspective, there is no good and bad. And to God, from God's perspective, everything is understood. And even the worst things imaginable, he understands why we do them and he will judge us fairly. I mean, he won't judge us. I don't like that word judgment, but you know what I mean? Like when he's looking at us, He's understanding everything that led up to that action. And that is all kept in mind as that person proceeds forward on their path. So there's that. The other thing is that I was, when I saw the master plan, I did see um, what we would consider to be good and bad and like really horrible what we would call evil horrendous things were included in that plan and i was shown that it all works out to absolute perfection how is not something that i remember or was able to bring back with me and i know that's not a very satisfying answer for a lot of people and yes i i totally understand what you're saying and um <clears throat> Because people, it's hard for us to understand God's mind. <laughs> mm -hmm. How can we? We we're only seeing things from this really um, limited perspect perspective, and mm -hmm. so it's difficult for us to see. And I love what you said that how much God loves us. Whether you know, it doesn't matter what we do, and you know what our actions are. There is nothing that could that could stop or um, yeah, stop God from loving. It's just like a parent, a parent who's, um, you know, who cares for their child. It doesn't matter what that child does. And uh, the, that parent is still gonna love that child. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, yeah, but I've always got the same thing that there is no good and bad in the eyes of God and the higher planes. There is no good and bad. There's just experience. And so um, the really what we would call evil deeds and evil works um, are part of the the master plan, like you were saying, mm -hmm. perhaps. Yeah, because because yeah. we live in a, a reality of duality. Mm -hmm. There is no good if there is no bad. Right. You can't have one without the other here. Yeah. Yeah. So and I think it's almost like it's set up that way on purpose because in ultimate reality, evil doesn't exist. It's all light and love and joy to the point where it seems so cheesy here to talk about it but that's what it is there mm -hmm. and then but here you have to have both in order for this reality system to work the way it's supposed to yeah for us to experience it like you said earlier for us to have that experience mm -hmm. yeah which is crazy <laughs> one thing i always think about i'm sorry i didn't no no you're you fine off. go ahead one thing that I think about that helps me to understand it is my husband is a big video gamer mm -hmm. and he just enjoys it. Just playing the different characters and he will put so much time into picking his character and he'll, he'll even call me over so I can help like pick all their physical <laughs> features and, and then he'll play the hard characters. Like he'll do the necromancer or the, the bad guy, just so he can have the, he can gain the experience of playing that and get better at the game yeah. and I almost think that's what it's like from a higher perspective looking down on this life it's not real it's real the experience of it is real when you're in it because we're immersed in these characters but from the higher perspective it's just a game yes I was that was my next question <laughs> you are psychic okay <laughs> <laughs> is you know a lot of people say this and it kind of, and it makes sense is that we are immersed in some kind of a holographic well uh, you know some kind of video game you know mm -hmm. or holographic reality that whatever you want to call it the, ma the matrix you know and i always thought that the matrix movie was a documentary anyway but that type of um experience what, what are your thoughts on that yeah, I do. There's been some scientists that have come out with theories about this now, um, saying that we're living in a some type of simulation. And it yeah. makes sense. When I heard it at first, I thought, well, that that just verifies what all the near-death experiencers are saying, because <laughs> they're saying that um, that this is some type of denser reality that our spirits are projected into these bodies and that our bodies are like TVs with antennas like the old tvs that had the antennas and they would pick up the signal so our bodies and brains are picking up the signal of our spirit that's being projected in here and so we feel like we're having this experience and then it also correlates to spiritual texts like e even religious texts even in christianity they'll teach you you're not your body you're actually a spirit and your real home is in heaven. And then you have texts like A Course in Miracles saying this, this world isn't real. The way that you experience the physical world is not real. You're actually in heaven right now. You're actually a perfect son of God in heaven right now. And so it all sort of fits together to, to help you understand that there's different levels of reality or there's different reality systems that you're existing in. And this is just one, and we're just here for a very specific reason. Right. My sister and I talk about, we have these conversations a lot. We talk about how we have these glimpses, glimpses of ourselves projecting, our higher selves projecting our um, experience, you know, like a projector, mm -hmm. you know, those old projectors we'd have in school. You're too young maybe to remember those, but uh, the projectors that we'd have. Yeah. <laughs> we're projecting our experience that way down into this reality um yeah so and i don't know if you know well you probably notice that more and more people are coming through with near-death experiences where they end up on a, sh a spit a sh i'm sorry a ship jeff marr was telling me that that okay. he had i haven't personally talked to anyone who said that but he had interviewed a couple people 
Yeah. He said I've, the exact same thing. I interviewed one gentleman. Yeah. And I saw one of his uh, podcasts with a woman uh, who wrote a book where she was on a ship it, during her near, near death experience, ended up on a ship. So, I mean, it's just so much. Um, and the book I was just telling you about while you were talking um, that triggered my memory of the Yeshua letters is that he starts out with a passage ascribed from Jesus that talks about us awakening from the dream that we're in it. We've been dreaming this, this reality for a very long time. And the time has come to um, wake up from the dream. Mm. Yeah. So um, that's my segue into what I wrote down a minute ago about our shifting reality. Yeah. What are your thoughts on that? Moving up. I guess we call it the ascension or whatever you want to call yeah. it. Yeah. I've, I've heard a lot of different um, theories, but they all seem to come together with basically the same message, which is that we're on the verge of the next evolutionary shift and it will be from um, denser physical bodies into more of a med, um, I don't know what you would call it, but like a lighter spiritual body and we'll have access to a lot more spiritual gifts. But in order to make that shift, we the key is that we have to grow spiritually and that's what i think a lot of us as humans don't necessarily understand we think of evolution just happening in the physical plane and it happens because of survival of the, the fittest or whatever but um to make the next leap the key is spiritual we have to start living in the frequency of love and only when we are able to um, clear out the shadow and more of the, the denser energy within our collective consciousness and personal, our personal consciousness, and tune into that frequency of love moving out of the frequency of fear, we'll be able to make that next leap um, that we're destined to make. And we'll have that will be the gateway that opens all of these spiritual abilities that we actually have. We just don't know how to use many of us right now. So near-death experiencers talk about it. Like a lot of them are shown two possible futures. You can um, choose the path of love and utopia, or you can choose the path of suffering, which will be a much harder path. But one way or another, we're going to get to this next level. And then um, spiritual texts like Law of One talk about it. Law of One calls it the harvest. Like we're at that time where we're move, ready to move from third density to fourth density. Um, but we have to choose, make the choice for the service to others path, which is basically the path of love. Um, and then I've also heard it talked about in terms of shift from 3D, third dimension to fifth dimension. And the people who talk about that will share how um, Earth is actually making the transition with us. And Earth wanted to undergo an experiment, like Earth as a spiritual being wanted to undergo this experiment to see how far down in how far dense can I get, how far down into the darkness from our perspective can I get, and then still come back up. And so that's what's happening. And and we're actually going through this shift with the earth now. So a lot of different interesting perspectives, but basically saying the same thing. It, yeah, and it's, it's really exciting times. I'm sure you feel that too, Melissa, and, and mm -hmm. uh, see that it's really exciting and that we chose to be here during these times. It's, um, it's amazing because this will never ever happen again with this planet. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I believe that's why there's so many people on the planet. Oh yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And also why it's so hard because based on what I've heard anyway, I'm from near death experiences and such, like you said, this has never happened before. This is a unique experiment really. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Yeah. And so it's, we chose to be here during this, these times, which a lot of us are remembering so that we can experience it and clear our plate. <laughs> like we were talking about earlier, you know, right. clear, clear our plate, finally clear it off. So it's not taking any, any longer. 
and move in as grace and ease as possible into the higher frequencies. Right. It's really, yeah. it's really exciting. Like it is. is. My internet is unstable. Am I coming through okay? Um, it's a little choppy, but I can hear. I can hear you. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's exciting, and um, I know during my uh, experience, my near death experience, I would have been very upset if uh, if my if Yeshua and my guys had let me stay. <laughs> I would oh, miss yeah. out on this. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, for sure. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, and I have some friends who have pre-birth memories, like Christian Sunberg, who I actually remembers choosing to be here to be a part of this, and it's just so exciting to him that we're it here is. doing it now. <laughs> I know, I agree. It is very exciting. I mean, it doesn't mean it's easy, but it's it's super exciting, especially when we yeah. see, uh, you know, see things happening so quickly. It's really awesome. Yeah. Okay. Um, is there, you, you talked about, okay, one other thing I wanted to ask you, if you have a minute, I have a couple yeah. minutes, we've got a little bit mm -hmm. over an hour. Okay. Uh, you talk about that, having that, you mentioned about having that peace with you in, that we have when we're in the, if we're blessed enough to have those experiences in that state of peace and love and joy and bliss. And um, do you have any any advice on uh, just how to bring that here mm -hmm. in your life, right? And not everyone's had these types of experiences where they've experienced home again. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Am I making any sense? Yes. Question? Yes. Okay. Yeah, there's two things that I've found to be helpful. And the first one is, is love. And that's the reason that we're here. It's all about love. So if you can learn to see everything as being about love, so just make everything in your life about love, every decision you have to make, every choice you have to make, make it about love. What's the most loving outcome for this situation? And just let everything else go and simplify it down to that. That can be really helpful. Um, also in how you see the world, um, if you can start to recognize that everything is about love and start to see everything with the eyes of gratitude and love, life can become very, very beautiful. And then the second thing, would be surrender. And this helps to bring in the peace. And I found it to be really, really powerful. And I don't do it all the time. I'm, I'm getting better and better at it. But when difficult situations arise or things that stress you out, if you can just surrender it, just let it go and trust that it's going to work out for the best that allows life to just flow effortlessly through you. It allows you to be in a state of peace. And at least for me, when I live that way, things just tend to work out so much more smoothly than when I'm resisting reality. So it's about recognizing that you're already in heaven. Everything is already perfection or the way that we perceive the world through the lens of duality doesn't allow us to see that so clearly. But if you can accept that that's the case, then the perfection of life, ironically, that's when the perfection will reveal itself to you. That's when you'll start to experience that you're living in heaven. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you for being here and chatting with me. Thank you so much for having me on. I really enjoyed the conversation. I really do enjoy talking with you. Same here. And we'll have to do this again. Yes, we definitely should. Totally. We have a lot to talk about. <laughs> yes, and we could talk for hours and hours. <laughs> oh, I know. I know, right? <laughs> and thank you, everyone watching. Thank you for being here. And Melissa, do you, um, do you mind sharing your 
contact info? Is it, if it's, is it okay if people can yeah. contact you? Of course. Yeah. Yes, um, you can find me on YouTube at Love Covered Life Podcast and on Instagram and TikTok at Melissa Denise, D E N Y C E. And that's the best way to get in touch with me. Nice. Nice. Okay. All right, everyone. Thank you. Now we'll have her information down in the details, Melissa's information. And thank you for being here again. Thank you, Melissa. And thank you, Sharon. Mm -hmm. Bye bye, everyone.